like the College of Renowned School District Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting to order at 4.30. Roll call. Welcome, Mr. Medved. Thank you. Here. Um, well, <laughs> here. And I am here as well. Item number three, agenda revisions and approval. So moved. Medved. Second. Medved with the motion, both with the second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Item number four, approval of the February 12th, 2024 meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Medved with the motion, Loth with the second. Any discussion? Sure. Item number seven, in the same sentence, uh, there was uh, at the beginning of the paragraph, it's, we're talking about KMS, and then in the same sentence, it brings up the implementation of DX condensing unit number two at DO. And I'm like, what is DO? <laughs> what is DO at KMS? And I finally figured it out. Does anybody know? District office. District office. Huh. So it's DX condensing unit, it's district office. So I think we should at least change the acronym to DO, uh, district office. So somewhere down the road, we're not sitting there trying to figure out what a DO is at KMS. You know, we need to be clear on these things if you know what I mean. It's changed. Any other discussion? And that's all I got. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, nays? Motion carries. Item number five, reports and updates. Letter A, work order report, Mr. Lord. Yes, so this is the well, bi-monthly, in this case, just a touch more uh, work order report um, consisting of dates from February 8th <coughs> to May 1st. Uh, these are essentially just all preventatives and reactive maintenance that has been done and completed uh, within that time frame. And again, this um, includes the request date, uh, days age, which is the, the time that in between the work order submission uh, to the completion date. Um, and the actual completion date is the date that it was closed uh, as opposed to the requested date. I know we had talked about the requested dates uh, in a previous meeting. I just wanted to keep that on there for kind of a rough um, transparency, so to say, uh, so you can kind of see a lot of people don't necessarily have a request date unless it is some sort of emergency, but as I had said, that usually is a phone call uh, first, and then we put these in afterwards just to record the work that was done. Um, I believe we were at 409 uh, from February 8th to May 1st, uh, which is uh, fairly decent as far as our, our records show within the last few years, uh, as far as you know, within the two and a half months-ish. Uh, I will say without spoiling any good numbers before the um, end of the year recap, we're at about a 77% uh, week or less turnover for work orders, which is um, about 23% higher than any time in history So, since we've had the program. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, a, a very good thing to see. I shouldn't say kind of, it is definitely a good thing to see. Yeah, that's pretty much, I don't know if anybody has any comments or questions on what we have listed. I'll open it up for questions. I do have a couple of comments, but well, I'll let you guys go first. I mean, I'd, there's only th 23 pages here, but this is a eye chart. Every page is an eye chart, so I, I wouldn't mind having a building committee meeting every month to kind of keep the length of this down, you know, if we could. Uh, but I do, I do have uh, at least one question here. I'm just going down the list, and I noticed uh, like line uh, 252, uh, for example, or 253, um, weekly A, B, C, D compartmentalization doors refer to PM schedule details in 101 days out. So I don't know what the PM is, if it's just making sure that they work. Yes. But 101 days out seems, especially for compartmentalization doors, you know, 
we want to make sure that they're not blocked open with a wood stop or something for some reason and, and that they work. Sure. And, uh, you, you know, if we're unsure whether they need to work or not, all we got to do is give um, Mount Horeb a call and uh, they'll let us know that, yeah, you do need your compartmentalization doors working. So uh, one, 101 isn't even the, the, the big number on the list. There were some other ones, I believe. I forget which school, but there were some other ones that I think were higher than that, maybe uh, <laughs> up in the 180 range. Well, that was going to be one of my clarifications because there's several rows just specific to Amy Bell and a repeat of, of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Different start dates, but all with the same completion date. So I, I, that was one of my questions for clarification was, are we kind of catching up to make sure that these are these have been done and in effect going forward, we wouldn't see something like this because anything that might have been open has now been closed and so going Correct. forward. Okay. Yep, yeah, there are and I've, I've done my best. Um, so some of these outside of these preventative maintenance schedules, um, like with the compartmentalization doors, uh, there isn't a direct finish date, so they, they prompt um, automatically and they could sit there until they're done. Now they do get checked between each fire drill when they get closed or any other lockdown drill or something of that nature. And naturally through each day's operation, they get checked, but they're, this physically makes sure that it's followed up on. We've had, a, I've had a talk with uh, staff to close these out once they are prompted sooner than later because it does affect long-term data. Uh, but just as you're saying, I'm, I'm still fishing through. I've gotten rid of a, a lot of them, even pre-work um, order completion report, uh, circling back to several years ago. And I just didn't want to go through and hit complete and move forward if it was something that maybe was left due to materials or, you know, completely left behind by somebody that may have left, the technician that left, et cetera. So um, as much as it sounds like it'd be a really quick turnover, there's a lot into it because some of them generate a few more questions than what I have. Um, but they're, they're essentially just hidden that we're still weeding out. So I'm hoping much sooner than later that a lot of these that have those <coughs> extremely long age dates outside of uh, some of the deliveries prompted earlier in the year or that type of thing um, get turned around on a much faster basis, which is what our, ultimately our goal is. Oh, that's right. Um, no, I think maybe then, I don't know if I really have any questions. I think I see everything. Towards the very end uh, are the questions I had in finance because we didn't have a building committee meeting in whatever it was, March. And uh, so there were some, not over $15,000 items, but some fairly high ticket items that you know, I was kind of wondering, well, where, where'd this come from? And uh, I, I realize now why we hadn't covered it in building committee because we didn't have the meeting. But in, anyways, the um, fluid handling, GHS, boiler controller repair, so that was, you know, in the vouchers for last month. And uh, that, that was item one at, on page 23, $1,100. Oh, are you? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, am I jumping it. ahead? Yep, you are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just wanted to bring up uh, that that was my big concern was was the the repeated numbers here. Sure. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just bring up for uh, kind of a question to the committee was uh, we d fortunately we don't have a a ton of things that seem to, to be uh, over a certain higher day amount, but I uh, wanted to ask people's opinions on if there is a certain number of days that we would say, you know what, is there an explanation for it? You know, is there, was there a delay in getting a part? It was there something else that, that you know, supply chain issues or what whatever that may have um, delayed the completion of that. I don't know what the right number is. I don't know if 60 days, 90 days, 120 days is the appropriate day where 
we would just ask for some additional information or maybe highlight those separately from this list just to say, you know, there is an explanation for this. I mean, some of the things, if you, if you did have a chance to look through all of the different items, some of the things are easily explainable. People were being proactive in asking for chairs to be set up six months in the future for some event. Obviously, that probably doesn't need much explanation, but I just wanted to see what people's opinions were on, on that particular item. Yeah, I think 30 days is probably a little too short. 90 would be a little too long. So I'm thinking 60 days would might be a good number to say, hey, if, if you got something on the list that's 60 days, we like might want to hear a little more about that. I'd like to see a really nice schedule as far as plan maintenance <laughs> that we're keeping up on those items. Um, it should be part of someone's normal routine. It should be you know a weekly, monthly, whatever it is. They should be able to follow that. I think as far as a deadline, a, a a date cut off it's tough to say because it depends on the item if it's a safety issue it should be 10 days I mean you know it depends on what it is um, but I like the you know 60 days it, it was, depends on what it is I I mean, was, really is hard to pick a date on that yeah I, I coming in I was thinking 60 because if you look at 311 uh, boys bathroom closest to gym handicap stall toilet does not flush well clogs frequently 64 days that seems like a health and safety so that should be a quick one right. that should yeah. if so, that goes 30 days i'd be concerned right, right. so uh frank if we could ask you to, to go forward a couple of takeaways um, we'll, we'll start off with 60 and and see how that goes and just see what what uh what we see going forward um, and then, uh, as Mr. Medved asked, if there's uh, kind of a look forward that you might be able to provide us, um, and that might not necessarily be as frequent, but just if, you know, over the next three months, here's, here's what we are looking at, and maybe we get a sense of what that proactive sure. uh, planning might look like, and then we can always adjust that going forward. Yeah, something we did with the future planning, the building maintenance kind of stuff, that we're budgeting for, we kind of put a priority list on it. So like an A, B, C. So check off all your A's because those are, you know, dead certain got to be done. Make those a priority. So when you look at the list, maybe you highlight those in red. You know, A and then B is blue and C is green. And that way, looking at it at a quick glance, you can see I need to take care of this, this, and this before, you know, something that's quite not quite as urgent. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely doable. I didn't... I didn't make a list, but uh, somewhere I think it was at the high school of uh, fluorescent tubes to be that needed replacement and maybe ballast transformers. I don't know that our people can do the type of work, but there's I don't think we should be replacing fluorescent bulbs anymore. There's LED bulbs that uh, you can have the ballasts in place, just leave them, change the lights out, or pull the ballasts and uh, just wire whatever, generally 120 volts, but I think some of it, do we have any 277 volt lighting in this, in our facilities? Not that I am aware of. Okay. That I've faced as of yet. I don't know if there's any metal halides that are existing somewhere yet that might pull a lot, but I think yeah. all of our lots are taken care of and so sometimes building. even in office areas if the building's got three phase power there's sure. 277 volt lighting yep. but i don't know if they make led bulbs for 277 but certainly for 120 they do make they it do so i don't up i don't think we should be putting fluorescence in anymore they're you know they they wear out and they pull the same power whether they're dim or bright they're only bright the day you put them in and it just gets yeah. worse and worse over the years so in, in my own shop, I pull the ballasts and toss them in electronic scrap, of course, and, uh, you know, just put in LED <coughs> bulbs with 120 volts wired to each end. In, oh, yes, Mr. Barney. Uh, my initial thought, uh, to your point of, you know, somebody requests chairs months ahead of time would be to have something like an SLA. And did you meet that SLA or not? 
if you get the chairs there on time, you met it. If you're there, there ahead of time, certainly you exceeded it. I think, Mr. Medved, your point of a priority kind of meets that same thought line. Come you know, you want to get your A priorities done first, and then you start working on your Bs and so on. Yeah, depending on what it is, like those kind of events, that would be an A priority for that day. Right, so. like there's gold men's room toilet won't stop running. Well, that's a immediate, especially with the water rates that everybody's paying. Yep. You know, that's something like that. <laughs> it's a Agree. triple A. So within your um, uh, software, Frank, that they use to put work orders in, you do prioritize them. So there's immediate... I don't know your different your different categories that they're put in. Yep. And and within his sophomore, if he marks it as something, they have a certain time period in which they're expected to get those items done. So I think when someone enters a work order, they'll go to Frank. Frank then assigns it with a code or a number of some sort. So then when his department pulls them, they're supposed to fall within those depending on if there's a uh, on an issue with a product or something um, but I, and that's not showing up on here to see if they were successful or not within those those time periods um, but they are expected based on what he puts as their work order when they're supposed to be done and then the other ones in here and correct me if I'm wrong but the PMs we have a, a part of the software that's solely for PM so he'll put them all in so there's monthly there's quarterly there's yearly ones so the ones that have been sitting out here, I'm going to, for 200 days or something, I don't know, but that could be an annual one where it could sit out there for 365 days, and as long as you got it on day 364, you satisfied the annual PM. So I'm assuming that's part of this. Right, I, and I think I may have explained that it's exactly right. Um, at one point, because we were talking about um, the priority layout, and that was something that I'm... I've ha I have been working towards, uh, now that we are fully staffed, we're kind of um, honing in the, the process procedure of the entire department, uh, because in prior uh, and up to this point in time, we really haven't been able to utilize to a full extent that priority layout. Um, it hasn't been prompted, uh, essentially, and, and really without the uh, single sign-on that we have now as well, uh, we were having the same people submit work orders everywhere that you know, essentially it would either, either be way ahead of time or it was something that was already done. So it kind of eliminated that need. But now we're getting that where teachers, any teacher or staff member uh, within Germantown School District can now submit a work order. So now that would be a perfect way to, or I shouldn't say a perfect way, um, that more or less prompts that need now for more of the prioritized work because you'll get a lot more or a larger array of work orders uh, you know more dedicated to certain room numbers but uh, that's exactly and I had said that I might be able to remove the preventative maintenance side of things um, or just bring it on a separate um, work order completion uh, just so you, you can kind of see when it was entered whether it's a um, bi-weekly monthly quarterly or annual preventative maintenance that way it doesn't skew what we think is being left um, including the compartmentalization doors that type of thing uh, but I can also always, perfect world for myself would be that I have a direct date uh, for some of those just for the reporting side of it. Um, but a lot of it does get skewed but not necessarily utilizing that priority array right now. Yeah, I think um, a couple of things from what you're saying there. So you're saying the software has a priority checklist in it. You can prioritize when it comes in and say this is an ABC or whatever, whatever terms you use. Yep. Um, but I think it'd be helpful on here rather than having an item for 365 days sitting out there have a date of completion so we know you know this isn't doesn't need to be done until june or july and we're looking at it in february may we right. know that's not a priority yep. i yep. think that helps too definitely I, i'm really i'm hoping to implement that uh, much sooner than later and in that case i will have that as part of this layout uh, the priorities i can get that on this report uh, so we have something to reference to. Yeah, because um, we're not seeing the software, we're just seeing this, so right, that, right. Would help. that would help. No, absolutely. Any other questions? <coughs> just just the, on, the, on the compartmentalization doors, did you say they're tested daily, Frank? Uh, not daily, daily in operation. 
uh, you know, usually if we do have a door that's not working or it gets hung up, um, it's brought to attention immediately, uh, you know, just because it's usually either closed or stuck open. Fire drills, uh, those are once a month. That's a really easy way to tell if they're not closing okay. or closing properly. So it happens within the mix, but this is just a good way to ensure um, that it is being done. Anything else from anybody? Oh, um, SLA, can you help me out with that? Service level agreement? S say Service again. level agreement? Service level agreement. You know, if someone files a request, there'd be something saying, hey, you should, that request should be completed in X number of days or weeks. Okay. Five B long range facility planning. Mr. Lark. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Yes. Yeah, so as the uh, district works to improve all operational aspects, uh, the district administrator requested a long range facility plan to help develop uh, long term goals and to keep uh, our district facilities in a state of quality while looking to make improvements strategically. Um, a long range facilities plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, plays a vital part in the proactive approach um, to not only the current state of the district facilities and grounds, but also aligns with strategic um, directions and, and future goal sets uh, and desired states of the facilities and grounds. Um, currently, we are working on processing, or we are drafting a uh, request for a proposal um, with intentions on seeking an experienced qualified firm uh, or firms um, interested in contracting with the district to provide these facility master planning services. Um, a project summary overview identifying the RFP dates uh, with a short scope of the services we are intending to uh, send out has been created and is attached. Um, staff anticipates that this process will take approximately three months in total um, and then bring it to the committee on August 12th of 2024 and full board on the 26th of August. Pending. Board approval. Excuse me. <laughs> little bum. Um, the tentative contract start date for is for September 16th of 24. Uh, so if you are looking at it, uh, you kind of have the layout of <coughs> the dates for the RFP and what we are tentatively looking at uh, right now. And the overview is essentially the scope of services uh, and what we intend on looking for informational wise uh, to get out of this uh, facility master's plan. Master plan, excuse me. Comments, question. I think there may be an advantage, although <clears throat> I think Tom can back me up. We probably don't want to use them, but the company that we use for architecture and planning for the referendum, they have all of our data. I mean, they know exactly what's been done, um, but we did have problems there. So um, I don't know if we can, if we have those files that we can give to somebody, that might be helpful. <clears throat> but we went through that process back then, and I think it was extremely helpful in trying to plan how we were going to handle the referendum. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think there's talk again of yeah, I think possible this, this operational helps us answer questions as we, you know, engaged with the village and you know, Brittany left to vote on the <coughs> and talking about future expansion, um, thinking from a standpoint of what is the current data and projected data ten years out, so that we can speak to. If expansion is in this region of Richfield or the village, this is the impact it has on the current state of the school from um, capacity standpoint, but also infrastructure and understanding where the long-term needs are. We have our five-year capital plan. That's to be proactive, but what are those bigger pieces that may need to be put in place so we can be strategic financially um, and determine if our buildings are in need of additions in the future or off-site a new piece of land and development depending upon or building depending upon if there's development throughout the village or in the um, outer regions of, of the village. So having a fresh start, I don't disagree, Mr. Medved, we have the previous information from prior to the referendum, but that's dated now five years plus, and so now 
it's kind of that reboot to kind of look long term so that if we do um, need to discuss or, or look at future re um, capital referendum, we have the information and we can also educate the community on what we're doing well and where we have room for growth in our schools um, versus areas that we might be limited or maximized as we continue to build a relationship with the village and, and talk through what the future of Germantown looks like, both from the municipality standpoint, but also the operations of the school district. Yeah, I think good news and bad news, we are in an area where we have a lot of green space that could be developed. Mm -hmm. um, so the future is very up in the air depending on how that area gets developed. I think the stat is 0.6 per residence of children in the district. That's the last stat that I heard. Sure. Um, so less than one per household, but that, if you build a thousand homes, that's, you know, 60, 600 students. So that can make a big difference in what we're doing. So it's hard to predict those kind of things, but paying attention to what the village is doing, and I mean, they are expanding and there are there is building going on. Mm -hmm. So we have to pay attention to that. And this could be helpful, somebody to synthesize the whole process and figure out where we're at and what we did. But I think that last study, we didn't do everything that was on the list. I mean, we've tried to catch up over time and do some of the things that we didn't do in the referendum, because the original referendum, they were asking for like 140 million and we only did 89, so it's tough to, you know, yeah. know exactly without looking back at that and saying, all right, this is what we, and there was a lot of things on that list that we did, and we did a lot of extra things, you know, the parking lot at MacArthur and the septic out at Amy Bell, you know, we did other things part of that, so I think knowing where the growth is and where the schools are would be very helpful without spending, you know, a fortune to find sure. out. Yeah, and we, we <laughs> built this um, an estimated dollar amount um, into the budget for next year, so it would be part of our operational costs through building the grounds and finance, so that we have, again, um, an outlook 10 years into the future, and we can we can plan accordingly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's key, and we're in some early discussions with the village right now about potentially adding one of our members to the planning commission and adding one of their members to our buildings committee in their open uh, committee seat um, and this type of information is really what's going to fuel those conversations those cross conversations uh, to, to not have those just be um, placeholder seats but actual meaningful conversations um, and to your point yeah if we had them from five years ago that's good information but as much updated as we can and as far as the village is going they're going to we're going to need to arm ourselves with that data kind of bring into that conversation um, to, to be, to, to hold more of a realistic uh, seat there. So I think it's a good good direction to move forward. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this is a smart thing to do. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean anything for tomorrow, but the, the fact that we're in a position where we can take the time, we've budgeted some resources to be able to look forward in be smarter about where we go is a, is a good thing. Any other comments? I think when you hear the word too, it's facilities master planning, it's not just the internal of the buildings, but the sites as well. <coughs> as we've engaged in some building tours, and I know we have Germantown High School coming up this week, and that's a big campus, right? There's a lot of green space there, and how are we utilizing the outdoor space? whether it's um, possible future expansion on the high school or restructuring of our current athletic facilities so that they're more um, up to speed, and more conducive to the community's needs and wants and those type of things. So you think about every site we have, with the exception of MacArthur, um, we have green space and that, what is that, how is that utilized and what does that look like? Um, this will help us shape a vision of that down the road. Yeah, that's also been a building committee topic of discussion for many moons and um, the athletic departments all kind of have their groups you got the football yeah. and the soccer and the baseball and everybody has their pet project and they want their field you know upgraded and there's been a lot of plans thrown around over the years um, and the limiting factor again is the budget um, it's a huge amount of money to invest in those fields to get them you know artificial turf or whatever you want to do sure. which makes them for the short term, very usable because you don't have to worry about the band screwing up the football field and all those kind of things. So it can be helpful, but it doesn't last and it, 
has maintenance costs as well. So it's it's been really tough. I mean, we do a good job with our athletics, but um, the fields are a big part of it, and it's hard to spend the money on those. For sure, especially in Wisconsin. Yeah. Mr. Are, are athletic fields included in this proposal? Yep, we want our sites. That's part okay. of the plan. Yeah. Yeah, because as looking through the scope of services, it didn't necessarily call out athletic facilities, and I'm wondering if that should be included in. Whatever RFP we'll, we'll make sure send. that when we're yeah. we're meeting Friday to finalize the document. Right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and we'll spell that out. That's part of facility capacity study for each building. Somewhere there's a document out there that shows how they wanted to reconfigure the high school yeah. field ground. Sarah shared that with me. Yeah. 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 And thinking about KMS too as a site, there's athletic fields there as yep. well from softball and yeah, those need some love. That's all I have. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, 5C, budgetary questions of interest. Yes, uh, so this was um, what Mr. Loeb was referring to earlier. Um, he had reached out early in, in April. Uh, again, we didn't have the buildings uh, committee meeting that month, uh, or following, I should say. Uh, so I brought those to the attention here with explanations uh, to each of them. Um, I will just, uh, do you want me to go through each one or? Sure. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, so item one, this was from fluid handling, uh, GS boiler controller. Uh, this, uh, I'm not going to say completely mislabeled, but somewhat. So that's the purchase of a boiler controller. We did the install of it in-house uh, in full success. That was one that was uh, water damaged. Um, not it was just over time of uh, humidity being in its setting it wasn't direct water uh, but it had shorted out so uh, our maintenance technician at the high school was able to do a full replacement and up and running within a day um, item number two johnson controls fire protection uh, this was part of the courtyard greenhouse project uh, all through well paid through donations um, and that was the install of horns and strobes uh, out in the courtyard this um, I, I believe I have the referral back into the I, I could have put it on there but the um, phase schedule uh, that I had had presented to the board uh, or committees in October maybe November um, this was on there so that is that's that part of it and that is something they have to do uh, for their liability and our liability we cannot do that install and that was out of donated <coughs> money Yep, yep. Um, and item number three, Peterson Management. So this is uh, part of the Rockfield septic programming uh, and alarm system that we have there with the septic system. Uh, essentially, this has been a program that gives us the heads up to see uh, what levels we're at, uh, ensuring that the pumps are switching um, and um, all switches are functioning properly. They do uh, minor little test sends, they send the report to, the, to Peterson Management's program and then they give us a, a short email of exactly what type of condition it is. It's been utilized uh, since it was installed. I don't have the exact date, but I believe it was right around that referendum time. Uh, it is the same at Rockfield as well. Um, I will say with this one, uh, this has been an ongoing agreement, but I'm looking at since that point in time, there are a lot of programs that you can buy over the counter, so to say, uh, to have in-house that essentially do the same thing. Um, but I haven't got costs on what what firmware updates or anything like that. I might you know, work with Jeff on, on that or IT in general to see if uh, do a cost comparison, if we can do it in-house. Sure. Is it um, kind of a preventative maintenance? Pre precisely thing? is what yeah. that is, yeah. Okay. And they do, they do perform, again, the... Um, what comes out of my mouth and what goes on here isn't always the same, but the septic programming, that's programming and ongoing maintenance. So they do the preventatives and everything for, for the controls and the, the pumps and everything itself. So I've, we've been working on getting a little more detailed with that as well. Just so it doesn't stray. Do those uh, sites get pumped out once a year or? Essentially, we, we do have them on a, a once a year uh, due to their size um, and the, the use of them. 
Um, I did look at Amy Bell's has been on average a little bit lower than what Rockfield's has been. Might be able to get away with a few more months, but in all honesty, to prevent any further issues or potential issues, I, I think we're safe right where we're at right now. Yeah. And this that program prompts their, when they were emptied last, how many gallons they pulled out and, and everything like that. So. Amy Bell's is for a four-track school. It's only a three-track, so I, I mean I'm fine with once a year on it, uh, but it is for a four-track school, okay. so there's room for expansion there that and makes sense, for yeah. up future uh, development in the area. We'll see what the plan says. Yeah, <laughs> that would that aligns perfectly what I with what I've been seeing. Then that makes sense. I tried to find a, a bunch of documentation on it, but honestly, it was uh, rather difficult. So, at least from on, that, previous on years. that system. Yeah, I, I figured there was some sort of a large packet that we received at some point, but um, I'm going to continue looking. I did reach out to Peterson for it. I didn't get too far with anything that was a fun information, so to say. Yeah, I recall that there's backups in that system. There's yep. extra grain fields in. Yep. Yeah, they did that full design. Uh, it's pretty extensive. Um, um, really, it opened my eyes to a lot of uh, septic systems so, and how they're built. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if backup is the right word. It's <laughs> over engineered. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't want that. Well, part of that was for the expansion, <laughs> possible expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was designed for four track school. Yes, I believe. That was all I had. Did that pretty much cover the three yeah. items? Yeah, that's good. Any other questions, comments? Can't think of anything. <coughs> okay. Item six, on this unfinished business, we have none. Item seven, new business, we have none. But I will just mention for public interest that there are uh, two school tours, building tours, uh, one tomorrow, I believe it's at Rockfield at 3.30. Uh, and then the 9th, what is that, Thursday? Yes. Yep. Uh, at the high school starting at 3 o'clock. And we have one next week too, I think. I just don't recall Kennedy. the date. Kennedy. Kennedy, so Kennedy on, on the 14th. Tuesday as well. On the 14th. Uh, with all that, I uh, will take one last motion. Will we adjourn? Second. Medvedev with the motion, Loth with the second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting ends at 5.08.